biochemical tests, bile tolerance. Enteric bacteria are found in the intestines and have to be able to survive in the presence of bile. The tests that will be demonstrated in this tutorial are the coliform identification test using McConkie auger and the esculin hydrolysis test. The media used in these tests are selective because they contain bile salts. Only bacteria that are tolerant of bile salts will be able to grow. The media is also differential and will show a visible difference for bacteria that produce specific enzymes. McConkie auger contains lactose sugar and neutral red reagent. Bacteria that can ferment lactose are called coliforms and they will produce acid that will turn the neutral red in the colonies a pinkish red. Detection of coliforms is important because they survive longer outside of the intestines and can indicate fecal contamination of water or food. Bile esculin auger contains the substrate esculin. If bacteria produce the enzyme esculinase, they will hydrolyze esculin, which is clear, to produce esculetin, which is dark brown. By testing your organism for bile tolerance and for enzyme activities, you will be able to narrow down the identity of your unknown. The inoculation techniques for testing the enteric bacteria are the two tests, bile esculin, and we're gonna use McConkie's auger. So it's a standard inoculation. You're going to use a loop on the auger surface. So we need to sterilize the loop. And even though you're using a loop, go ahead and use your working stock to take the inoculum. Just don't take too much. So we're going to start with the bile esculin auger. The technique for inoculating this is going to be a straight streak. We want a heavy line of growth right down the middle. So I have my organism here, the working stock. And I'm just going to do a straight streak right down the middle. Now this is going to give me a heavy line of growth. I'm going to incubate that for 24 hours at the optimal growth temperature. The McConkie auger is a good time to practice your streak for isolation technique because we want to see the color change in individual colonies. So I'm going to sterilize my loop. Take the sample from the working stock. Place a little bit of the inoculum there, and then go ahead and make sure you are streaking for isolation by reducing the number of organisms overlapping, streaking. And you're going to incubate the McConkie plate for 24 hours at your optimal growth temperature. To evaluate the bile esculin test, we're going to look for two things. The bile esculin auger has bile in it, and only enteric organisms can tolerate bile and grow in bile. So the first thing you're going to be looking for is the presence of growth or no growth. Here's an example of growth. And so this would be a bile tolerant organism. The second thing we're going to be looking for is the ability to hydrolyze esculin. Esculin is the substrate that's present in the auger, and only the bacteria that produce the enzyme esculinase are going to be able to hydrolyze it. And when they break that down, they produce esculetin. And esculetin goes from a clear color to a dark brown. So here's an example of bacteria that there's growth, but it, so it's bile tolerant, but it also shows esculinase activity and hydrolyzes the esculin. So you can see the example two bile tolerant bacteria 
One is escalinase positive, one is escalinase negative. To evaluate the McConkie-Aga results, you're going to look for two things. The first thing you're going to look for is growth. McConkie-Aga contains bile salts, and so only enterics that can tolerate bile will be able to grow. The second thing McConkie-Aga can test for is the ability to ferment lactose. McConkie-Aga contains lactose, but it also contains the reagent neutral red. Neutral red will turn pink almost red in presence of acid. So if the bacteria has enzymes that will allow it to ferment lactose, then the colonies themselves are going to turn a dark pinky red, almost purplish. They also tend to cause the media around them to remain pink. This is what the media looked like before you inoculated it. It's close to neutral, and so the neutral red is a little bit pink-orange. This is an example of an organism, and it's difficult to see the organism, but when you see the glare, you can see that there are colonies there. This is a bile-tolerant organism, but they have a drab color. It's not pinky red. These are not lactose fermenters. And so this is negative for lactose fermentation, but it is bile tolerant. This, however, is an example of an enteric that does ferment lactose. And so we call this a coliform. And the colonies themselves are a dark pink purple because the neutral red and the acid produced by the lactose fermentation has turned that color. And the media around them is also pinkish. I want to show you a false result. This is an organism that produces a natural pigment that makes it red when it's grown at room temperature. It's bile tolerant, so it grows. But if we compare the color of the media between the lactose fermenter and this, which is not a lactose fermenter, the auger is not pink itself but the pigment, natural pigment, in this non-lactose fermenter is bright red. So this can be mistaken as a positive, but I will always have the example plates in the front for you to look at and compare yours to. Record the results of your test by using color to draw your results. Make sure you label your drawings and write your scientific results. For each test, record if it is bile tolerant or not. Record if it is positive or negative for lactose fermentation, that is, if it is a coliform or not. Record if your unknown organism is positive or negative for esculin hydrolysis.